Hey, everybody. This is a clip from the latest episode of The Randy Road Show. If you want the full episode, you can watch live on Free Speech TV, Dish Channel 9415, Direct TV 348, Sling, Roku, and Apple TV. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. As the United States passes the six million mark, Dr. Anthony Fauci is once again put in a position of reassuring the nation that he is still advising the president on the nation's coronavirus response after Trump knocked Fauci saying, I inherited him. He was here. He was he's been here for 40 years. I think when you get statements like that, that doesn't really reflect what actually goes on. Dr. Fauci also said the numbers that you've been hearing, the 180,000 plus deaths are real deaths. Dr. Fauci was compelled to make that clear because the president again tried to muddy the facts. In this case, retweeting a baseless QAnon quack. Claiming oh! COVID-19 has only killed 9,000 people. That constant tension between what the president says and the data is a recurring pandemic headache. There's a disconnect between the data and the president, everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's Wednesday, and so there's a battle of the Wilmingtons, sort of like the Civil War over here. Yeah, Donald Trump was in Wilmington, North Carolina, and Joe Biden was in Wilmington, Delaware. And when Joe Biden spoke... You almost felt sane. It felt like normal. It felt like, you know, everything was going to be okay. That there were adults in the room that were literally helping to stop the spread of this pandemic. And then all of a sudden they switched over to Wilmington, North Carolina, where Donald Trump was celebrating Confederate history or something. I, it was just, it's so, I, it's a tale of, 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 Two countries. This is bizarre, and but I watched Joe Biden, um, and it was like orienting. Do you know? Like you could, you could figure out that yes, we have a pandemic. Yes, we have six million, almost six million one hundred thousand cases. Yes, we've had one hundred and eighty-four thousand deaths from this, and then you switch over to the other people, and you hear things like. Joni Ernst saying she doesn't believe that 184,000 Americans have died of COVID singularly, singularly, that they had comorbidities and that's why we should play, I don't know, Iowa football or something. It's just so disorienting. It's just so strange. Well, Iowa State has reverse course. They're not going to allow football fans at the home opener because after Sturgis, everybody, yes, the Sturgis motorcycle rally, a biker in his 60s has died. Now, I'm sure he had other comorbidities. He's a 60-year-old biker. But he died of COVID. So, Ride hard, die young is now ignore reality and die needlessly. Good for you, bikers. Good move. Really smart. And 260 other infections have been traced back to the Sturgis uh, rally. And so there's a spike in infections now in the Midwest. Because you had thousands of elderly people with absolutely no fashion sense crammed into bars in South Dakota, which sounds like a plan to wipe out Trump supporters. I, I swear to God, he's killing his own people. It's just so bizarre. However, Joe Biden had a press conference today, and it was, you know, he read his opening remarks, which had to do with his plan for reopening schools, which he has had in place in writing for you to peruse. Yes, I said peruse in July. In July. He had a plan for school reopenings, okay? And so today he had a press conference where he talked about the things that would need to be in place, including a decrease in community spread of coronavirus in order to open schools successfully, right? And it was like 
amazing to hear real policy ideas, whether you agree. You've outlined your, school, your plan to reopen schools safely, but what about what happens in the interim? Right now, millions of parents across the country are facing this very impossible task of trying to work full-time right. and help their children full-time to learn virtually. What is your message to these parents, and what can you do to help them while you work to reopen schools? Help is on the way. I've laid out a clear plan for child care, a clear plan for starting early education as well, so three and four and five-year-olds are in school and like. But I'm not president right now. What we should be doing is we should be providing for more help for people who, in fact, are trying to juggle the choice between do I stay home with my three, four, or five-year-old and take care of them in the middle of this COVID problem, or do I go to work and earn a salary? Right. What do I do? And so that's why we have, I have a major initiative to deal with child care and elder care. Oh. So people can be adequately paid to come and take care of folks, children, as well as the elderly that you may be taking care of, a parent, may, a, 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 a husband or wife may be taking care of, as well as making sure that uh, uh, those folks are able to get back to work. And that's why focusing on daycare centers and making sure they're safe and healthy now is equally as important as dealing with, almost as equally important as dealing with schools. Wow, everybody. Plans, policy plans, initiatives, elder care. Can you imagine? Can you imagine getting help with your elder care? Oh, oh my God. It makes me want to cry. To get help with elder care? Oh my God, to get help with your two, three, four, five year old. Oh my God, how do you open schools, Joe? What should we do? We should be providing all of the PPE and all of the oh. safety that is necessary and sanitary cap capacity to allow them to open. Hundreds of them have been opening because some states have gone in and done that. There should be universal guidance coming from the President yeah, of the United thanks. States of America. There should be basic standards to how, in fact, in what circumstances you can safely open a daycare center, you can safely, safely open a child care center. In addition to that, in the future, the idea, this has brought home a number of glaring problems we have in America, this whole pandemic and what's happened in terms of jobs. The idea that we're in a situation where you have so many parents who have to make the difficult choice as a single parent or both working parents to decide whether one gives up their salary and stays home with a child under the age of five or six and or somehow leaves them with somebody that there's not particularly qualified and goes to work so they can earn a living is a choice that is not we sh shouldn't be making. We're the only industrialized country in the world that forces people to make that kind of choice. So there should be, no one should have to pay more than 7% of their in income to provide for childcare and be able to go to work. This is something that is a major element of my Build Back Better program. But in the meantime, in the meantime, the most important thing that can be done is have CDC issue st really straightforward guidelines on, on what circumstances you should be able to open up a, your daycare center or your child care center now. And there should be clear standards. And states should have the wherewithal to be able to go out and inspect those facilities now. Oh, a plan, everybody, a plan. PPE and social distancing and money invested in schools for, uh, you know, expanding uh, the area that they can use for. Oh, my God. I just, uh, wow, I, he, he, he had me on elder care because you all know my situation. But, I, I mean, honestly, it, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty orienting uh, discussion there. You know, it's presidential, it's policy-driven, it's science-based, ba it's with the people of the United States in mind, it's with young parents, it's with older parents who are taking care of their elderly parents in mind. Who needs that when you can have a president who talks about white supremacists being awesome patriots and soup yeah soup i mean who need who needs who needs real policy fixes and prescriptions for a pandemic when you could have a president who has to deny that he had many strokes which nobody reported he had